The Social Security Administration recently updated their projection for when Social Security would run out. They originally had it at 2035, then 2034, and then the latest update is now 2033. I'm going to give you four things that you can do to protect yourself in case this happens, and I'll tell you my personal opinion on what I think may end up happening to Social Security. You see, this is a source of stress for people getting close to retirement because if there were to be a reduction of Social Security, obviously a lot of dreams will get crushed and a very large amount of people's retirement plans are dependent upon Social Security income. You want to have a better grasp on the issue so you can feel better about moving into your retirement years. And the headlines and talking heads are not painting an accurate or believable picture of what may or may not happen because they're taking advantage of how we all feel and the emotions that are attached to it. Now, your goal is to have a better grasp on the issue because 2033 is only 10 years away and 10 years comes really quickly. And this means there'll be 10 years of headlines revisiting this topic over and over again. So you're going to be facing this conversation for the next 10 years because they'll definitely sensationalize it. And don't get me wrong, it's a serious issue, but there's only so much that we can do. So our best thing we can do is try to have a proper perspective on it. So in this video, I'm going to cover how impactful will this reduction be? What can they do to fix social security? What are four things that you can do to protect yourself? And then what do I think will potentially happen? And in case we haven't met yet, I'm Nick Davis, founder of Brindle One Day Wealth Management, and we're here to show you how to retire with calmness and clarity. And if you ever want to see this type of video in your feed again, if you hit that subscribe button, it will likely pop back up as a recommendation for you. So we appreciate that because it helps get the word out. Thanks for liking the video if you like it as well. All right, let's get started. According to the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, they say that the reduction equates to about 23%, which for the average couple would mean $17,400 per year or right around $1,450 per month. To put that in perspective, think about what $1,450 per month buys you, pays for in your life. Probably a lot. Everybody would be impacted if Social Security were to go down. And I think it's like, don't quote me on this, but it's like 40% of US citizens in retirement have almost all of their needs being met from Social Security. So it can be a pretty bad situation. Now, the higher income you are, the less Social Security impacts you because it, it contributes less to your overall plan percentage-wise, just in general. But it's still a big deal because of the inflation-fighting effects that Social Security cost of living adjustment adds to middle-income and, and upper-income families as well. You likely don't have any other source of stable income that increases every year with a cost of living adjustment. So if you wanted to kind of put this in perspective, if, if you wanted to replace that $17,400 per year in income for the rest of your life, and you committed yourself to only pulling 4% out of investments, you'd need $435,000 lump sum to meet that need. It's not, not a small number. We shouldn't underestimate the power of this cost of living adjustment and inflation because it really does help when you look at the next 20 or 30 years of retirement. And I have found that people tend to spend money more enjoyably during those first five or 10 years of retirement when they know and feel certain that the next 15, 20, 25 years looks good. So the better they feel about the entire plan, the more they enjoy those first five or 10 years. If they don't feel good about the plan, they tend to uh, chronically underspend and are hypersensitive. And that's no way to live. So point is social security obviously plays a really big part in everybody's retirement plan, even if it's not your sole source of income. So what are some potential fixes for social security? Well, what I'm about to say is not any endorsement for any political party or any particular belief, but it does help to show what the academics think about fixing social security outside of all of what you hear in the media. And there's an act called social security 2100. And in this act, um, it is written that they believe that they can make Social Security solvent for 75 more years. That's 75 more years by doing a couple of key things. And uh, most notably of those key things is, number one, if they raise the uh, full retirement age from 67 to 68. So 
not doing it for people who are close to that age right now, but people who are younger. So people like me, I'm 45 years old, probably easy thing for them to do is to make R4 retire at age 68 or maybe even later. Okay. They've done it before. This could, this contributes to what the social security 2100 act is saying would improve social security. And the second key thing is raising the taxable base wage that's included for social security taxation. And so what that means is that in Medicare, your earnings pay taxes on all those dollars. But with Social Security, there's always been an upper limit and they keep raising it every year for uh, inflation or whatever. But I don't know why they would do it for inflation. But point this, because they don't make adjustments for inflation on other parts of the way that things are taxed. But the thing is, is that it doesn't, it, it doesn't tax you on a high level. So people who are making a million dollars a year pay the same amount of Social Security contribution as people who are making um, $150,000 a year, let's say. So adjusting the full retirement age from 67 to 68 and raising that taxable base wage included for Social Security is their solution. I promise you, you're going to be seeing all sorts of headlines over the next 10 years because it's juicy stuff, but the solution is right in front of us. It's just not as exciting to talk about. I think the point here is to know that the solution is in front of us. They know how to fix it. They're just going to politicize it and sensationalize it along the way. Let me read you an excerpt from the trustee report regarding the status of Social Security. It is clear that modifications of the program benefit and tax levels can be made with the current program structure to restore sound financial status. So with the current program structure, changes can be made. But it is up to each generation to come to a consensus on the tax levels it's willing to pay and the benefit levels it wants to receive. I should also point out that Social Security can't technically run out of money because it's collecting money from workers. So it's actually not just sitting around waiting to run out of money. And I could already hear the, the comments people would say, because I would say the same thing. Oh, so you're telling me we're in the hands of our policymakers to fix this. And that's kind of, you know, the solution. And unfortunately it is, which I believe is why it's important for good people to be in office and to have good lawmakers. In fact, I don't know which founding father said this, but I remember hearing a quote years ago that, you know, it doesn't matter. The constitution is great, but if we, if the, if our rulers are not righteous, then uh, it's all kind of kaputs anyway, right? So pray for our leaders. So yeah, I don't disagree with you on that. So let me give you four things you can do to protect yourself if this thing doesn't get fixed over the next 10 years. So the first thing you can do is get more benefits. We can complain about Social Security all we want, but ultimately, if they do reduce Social Security, I would rather have less of a bigger number rather than less of a smaller number. I'd also rather have less of more COLA, that, that cost of living adjustment. So the more co uh, Social Security dollars you have, the more dollars you're actually getting that inflation adjustment. You grow your benefit by waiting to claim. And I've made other videos about that. The next thing you can do is understand your expenses and your income sources. You can't really protect yourself without calculating what your income and your expenses are going to look like. In fact, if you do nothing more than listen to the media and sitting around and worrying, you're doing nothing other than just perpetuating your fear. People who are serious about retiring with calmness and clarity not only want to understand what's going to happen to social security, but they want to understand how their income and expenses are going to change over time. Let me give you a few examples. So for example, your social security will go up over time, pretty much every year, probably. But then when you lose a spouse, it's going to go down. Military pensions usually definitely go down when there's the death of one spouse. Private pensions may go down if there's the death of one spouse. Your house is going to get paid off. You're going to have so many years of vacations. You're no longer going to be paying for extra gas to go to work and paying for toll roads. So your eating out is going to change. If you're serious about retiring with calmness and clarity, you want to understand what how your expenses are going to change and how your income is going to change. So our team here at Brindle and Bay always has you look at your expenses before you retire and after you retire so that you can become familiar with what those needs are going to look like. You could do the same exercise. Next, you could reduce your fixed expenses. So you're going to have fixed expenses. You're going to have variable expenses. If you can get your fixed expenses down, like housing, credit card debt, then you can enjoy your flexible expenses, your variable expenses, like vacations. And that flexibility is where you'll find safety. You'll actually enjoy your vacations more because you'll know that you're more nimble. 
you're more light on your feet, you have the ability to adapt to change. So reducing your fixed expenses can go a long way to help to protect yourself. And next, you can stress test your plan. So if you have a plan that's comprehensive, it's always being monitored, it's a sound plan, you can then stress test it. And I'll show you what that looks like the way that we would do that. Here you can see that the person has, just trust me, they have the sound plan behind the scenes, but then we just simply show them what happens if there's a 20% reduction in social security. And it says, okay, now their plan is 83.7% successful. Sometimes just visually seeing what happens if a certain thing were to happen, like if we had hyperinflation or medical costs were higher, just to see what would happen can go a long way to kind of help you to feel better about your plan. It also can help to point out problem areas that you might want to go and fix. So those are the four things that I think you can do to help protect yourself just in case our wonderful lawmakers don't fix social security by 2033. Now, here's what I think will happen. One thing I think is going to happen is it's going to be sensationalized. Like it's definitely going to be sensationalized up to the last minute. It's going to be used in politics for leverage. So we can count on that. You probably want a prediction. You want a dogmatic prediction because if somebody says, I think it's going to be okay, it satisfies you for just a while until you see that next media headline that scares you, right? So that's why we have to kind of base our feelings on something other than just a sensational soundbite of what people are saying. So be aware that in the media, the strongest opinion wins. So if you want to be successful in public speaking or as a newscaster, you just become extremely opinionated and dogmatic. And you're not going to like my answer because I don't think that it's, it's uh, necessarily correct to be dogmatic for the sake of being dogmatic. So my opinion is pretty weak. Okay. And it's, it's hopeful but cautious. This is going to sound really cliche, but we hope for the best. We plan for the worst. Hate saying it, but that's the way it really goes. Cautiously optimistic. I think they will definitely raise the full retirement age to 68 or older. I think they will definitely raise the base wage contribution to social security dollars for higher income earners, definitely. And maybe for even middle income earners. Uh, those things I think are pretty much the writings on the wall because that can do that can go a long way. There's other things they may do, like they invented means testing for Medicare. They may invent some sort of means testing for that as well. Who knows? And I think Social Security will still be around. It's just going to take on a different form, just like a lot of things do. So what does that mean for you? It means that financial planning is more important now than ever before. If you want an example of how financial planning can help. I made a video about three ways you can reduce taxes on your social security benefit. And I'll link that right here. Hey everybody. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see the way that we help people to create calmness and clarity for their next chapter of life, take a look at us at brindleandbay.com. Again, thanks for watching the videos. Please remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you are notified every time a new video comes out.